HD Smartcast. You are listening to a Mint production brought to you by HD Smartcast. Hi, I'm Abhinav of Call, and welcome to this edition of Why Not Mint Money podcast. Most mutual funds with associated banks have the sister banks among the largest recipient of distributor commissions. Today we have with us Kirtan Shah, founder and CEO of Credence Wealth Advisors. and we'll talk about the impact on investors when banks push their sister fund houses schemes to investors and what investors should keep in mind when buying mutual fund schemes from banks let's listen in hi welcome to why not mint money a personal finance podcast where we help you understand basic money concepts and share strategies for you to build your wealth so let's get started on your money journey welcome geetan uh, welcome to why not mint money podcast hi i'm now thank you so much for having me Uh, so my first question is, what does diversification mean uh, when it comes to mutual fund investing? So Abhinav, uh, largely while you and I talk about diversification, uh, you know we are looking at a situation where we don't want to put uh, everything into one basket, right? So broadly, broadly when I say diversification, you are largely looking at bringing maybe a couple of schemes or a couple of uh, investment instruments together. where probably they are not extremely highly correlated right so you don't want to invest into assets where their correlation is positive one what that means is that if if uh, one scheme goes up by 10% the other scheme also goes up by 10% but what it ideally does not solve your purpose is when one scheme is falling by 10% the other one also falls by 10% so you don't actually get a balance in the portfolio so while you are trying to diversify you are largely trying to build uh an investment universe in a way where everything that you bring together is not positively weighted uh, by 100% right so what typically you are trying to do is that if let's say in a in a given situation if markets are falling by 10% and i'm talking about equity at least you have some fixed income component in your portfolio which probably might balance your portfolio out and hence the overall fall in your portfolio might not be as much as the fall in the equities market or probably the other way around let's say if you have some gold right uh, and if the equity markets are falling there can be situation where the gold is actually going up when the equity markets are falling so largely when i say diversification you are trying to put together two three asset classes which are not perfectly correlated to each other because you want to maintain a sense of balance in the portfolio you don't want everything that you've invested in to fall or rise together because during good times it may really work out well but during bad times it may not be may not your portfolio may not look in a great shape now that is what you and i mean when we say let's say diversification but while we are purely talking about mutual funds right so of course you can do one level of diversification is where is where you are talking about doing equity uh, doing fixed income doing gold right now depending on whatever your risk appetite is right you might decide how much of the 100 rupee that you have you want to put in equity how much of that you want to put in fixed income and how much of that you want to put in gold but i think if you go slightly more deeper in this particular uh, discussion because we are broadly talking about mutual funds largely i think uh, there are there are two levels of diversification that we should think about So let's say if I'm an aggressive investor and I'm saying I want to put 80% of my money in fixed income, sorry, 80% of my money in equity, right? In equity also you have two, three different kinds that you have to look at, right? So let's say I'm there are three types of strategies that investors or fund houses play. While you talk about Axis, Axis does growth investing. You talk about ICICI, they do value investing, right? You talk about Quant, they do momentum investing, right? so while you are talking about putting 80% in equity right all of these three strategies work under very different economy and macro conditions right so diversification in equity further boils down to styles of investing right and it is very similar in fixed income as well right so you have credit risk and you have duration risk so while you are trying to build your build your fixed income portfolio also you will have to go slightly more subclass and try and figure out where and how do you want to focus on which kind of strategy that the fund house is playing right 
so largely while we talk about diversification we are saying diversification is at the asset level where depending on your risk profile you decide how much do you want to put in equity how much do you want to put in fixed income and how much do you want to put in gold and level 2 in my opinion is uh, uh, within these asset classes there are different styles of investing or different risks that each of these investment instruments bring on board you will have to diversify at that level as well so how many funds can ensure diversification and at what number would you say will result in over diversification i think abhinav uh, honestly in my opinion unfortunately i see a lot of retail investors who feel that the more number of uh, funds that you add in your portfolio you actually diversify in fact this is very counterproductive is because uh, once you add more than 4 5 funds in your portfolio in my opinion there is so much of overlap in most of these funds that instead of diversifying you are actually concentrating your portfolio so that number in my opinion is 4 5 right so probably if you can bring together a composition of 4 5 funds where you get market cap diversification across large mid small you get diversification across geography right and also you can get diversification across styles of investing i think if you can put together 4 5 funds uh in a portfolio which brings all three levels of diversification that i spoke to you of probably that can be a very interesting portfolio from a diversification standpoint i don't really think you need more than 4 5 of course if there are more funds which are very specific to a particular goal you might add so let's say for example if i am aggressive 80% of my equity portfolio can be spread across these 4 5 schemes that i spoke to you of but yeah you might add a couple of uh Uh, liquid funds or an ultra short term or a money market fund because you want to keep liquidity right so those two three extra funds for specific reasoning is okay but largely i think equity portfolio four five funds should uh, bring in the right kind of diversification that you are looking at so recently the data showed that some banks get most of their commission from their sister asset management companies uh, so how does this impact uh, imp- investors I mean, it uh, definitely impacts them great deal. So, uh, you know, I mean, uh, not just not just the way you and I think, but uh, the way the last three years has panned out. Probably, it shows us how AMC concentration is so important for us to diversify. So, if I can give you an example of, let's say, frankly, in Templeton, right? So, I so categorically remember that in March. Uh, of 2018 if i get this correct right when i was looking at the fact sheet i actually saw that uh, the cblo was negative 17% only in the franklin templeton low duration fund right whereas there was not a very large problem uh, similar looking problem in let's say uh, the ultra short term fund of the fund house right but what eventually end up happening is because there was a run on the fund or run on the scheme on the low duration side they saw the spilling effect on various other funds which actually didn't look as as bad as uh, the low duration fund looked right if you look at the recent example of access right uh, you know access focus 25 let's say if i have to talk about a particular scheme had got nothing to do with front running uh, which was discussed right largely but we saw how market understood what are the concentrated bets that access as a fund house has taken and those stocks got beaten down in the market and and we saw how probably in a uh, focus 25 which has got nothing to do with the front running also actually saw some serious underperformance right which which was not meant to be right because it had got nothing to do with the front running that happened right so i think it's i think it's very important uh, to have amc level diversification is because uh, if you put everything if you put everything in one particular amc right uh, largely though they are very separate uh, market cap diversification scheme or strategies largely at at the institution level probably the thought process is the same right so which is why we have seen historically also let's say if i have to quote you an example of hdfc as well right uh, largely you might have schemes which are uh which are very different from each other theoretically but because the uh, because the investment process at the central level is the same uh, you would see most of the schemes of a particular fund house either perform 
or non perform in a given time frame right and that is what we've been observing so uh, if at all you are getting invested through a bank and that bank is typically trying to get you to invest everything in the same sister amc's portfolio i think it will definitely counterproductive for the investor uh, uh, largely because it brings in too much of concentration uh, and even if theoretically uh, you know the schemes may look like diversified there is definitely a concentration or a strategy risk uh, that runs at uh, the central level for that particular amc you know right so what should investors do uh, if their banks uh, push for a particular scheme uh abhinav you know, in my opinion uh, very largely uh, i'll tell you a problem that runs with banks as uh, investment advisors or distributors right uh, there are two major challenges that i see here and uh, this may be very specific to cases that i have seen but i largely know that something like this is a big problem in the industry uh, look uh, as a bank or as an rm of the bank there is so much of sales pressure at the rm level that the rm largely in my opinion is looking at probably uh, you know kind of selling uh, a particular uh, product to the investor and not really uh, you know thinking at the macro level of whether and what is the investor's requirement largely point 1 sales pressure point 2 also is that we've seen that the average uh, tenure of rms at the bank is very low right so you would see every 3 year 2 year probably the same investor will have a new rm which will want to reach out to the investor and tell the investor now that you know what was recommended to you in the past was not good and now i will do a better job on your portfolio and that is where churning starts happening right a level 3 like we know that because they are a part of the same ecosystem right the amc and the bank there is definitely a sweet spot for for uh, the bank to recommend the same A- amc's uh, product right and hence for me uh, largely uh, bank relationship management in terms of investment advisory distribution of mutual fund products wealth management whatever we want to term that as is not a great relationship to have right it is more sales driven it is more short term commission focused and it does not really solve the larger interest of the investor in my opinion abira my last question is how can investors check if a particular scheme is good for them and fits their uh, investment profile so uh, abhin of look there are uh, i think in my opinion there is some at least very basic level of understanding that that the investor will also need to build on their own right just uh, depending largely on what somebody else is recommending and going by what they are suggesting is is or something may not be not be very very fruitful for the investor so a very uh, uh, so very uh, simple suggestion to the investor community is also that keep your eyes and ears open and don't just blindly go by what somebody else is asking you to buy and sell that's that's one but a very important data point is that all of these amcs uh, display something called as the risk matrix right so when you look at the risk matrix you understand whether and how much risk is uh, broadly available in a particular scheme that they are investing in and this is done at the uh, fixed income level also and this is done at the equity level also right so that is one another data point that you can really look at to try and figure out whether if you are conservative are you getting invested in an aggressive scheme or you are you are you pushed to invest in an aggressive scheme or not right third very importantly i think uh, broadly understanding uh, what is fixed income meant for and what is equity meant for can also solve a very large problem of now so i think as an investor in my opinion at least unless you don't have a 7 to 8 year investment horizon don't enter equities right so you and i will keep telling everybody do sips but the problem is you look at historical data point and you will understand that the sip will only work in your favor if you stayed invested for 7 8 years so for me largely as a retail investor if you don't have a 7 8 year view don't do equities right uh, the smaller the view you have fixed income is a better asset class view even in fixed income you know unless you are a professional investor sophisticated enough and you understand do not try and take a lot of risk in 
in fixed income right fixed income is probably largely to give you more balance to the portfolio rather than generating 1 or 2% returns higher than a competitive other product available in the market so that's third largely you understand that if you have 7 8 years you enter uh, equity you have you don't have 7 8 years you don't enter equity right and in on the fixed income side look at the risk matrix and you understand that you don't want to take a lot of risk so go ahead and choose that product and the fourth uh, largely again from a investor learning perspective uh, the investor has to understand that the uh, the market cap brings in a lot of risk right so if you are doing small cap versus a large cap your small cap might look very attractive to you on the last 3 year 5 year return basis but it brings in a lot of volatility right so if you are not very happy and you can't digest the volatility that the small cap is going to bring on board you rather are good staying invested largely on the large cap side so as an investor you have to understand large cap in the equity space is uh you know less volatile versus a small cap so i think if these three four points are largely understood abina then in my opinion uh, the investor will end up uh, more or less uh, being very close to where he she wants to be that's it for now kitan thank you for talking to us thank you so much for having me on the show abina that's it for today if you have any questions you can write to us at minmoney@redlightman.com if you want me to cover any specific topic DM me at at the rate I'm now call it Twitter to stay updated on this podcast. Follow HD Smartcast on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn to listen to more such podcasts. Log on to hdsmartcast.com or suno nai nazariye se. This was a Mint production brought to you by HD Smartcast. HD Smartcast.